Now we will have uh, <coughs> some short presentations from uh, the Applied Autonomy and Columbus about how they look at the future of autonomous public transport. So I will give the word to Lars Gunnar, I think, from Lutu now. So please, Gunnar, now Lars Gunnar. All right, uh, do you guys hear me and, and see my screen as well? Yes, perfect. All right. Okay, the, I was uh, given some uh, very, uh, we were given, Ruto uh, were given uh, some few special uh, minutes. Uh, so I hope uh, I, I will use it well. Uh, I'm Lars Gunnar, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm one of the fortunate one that is um, working with Ruter and also we back here at the call as, as well. Um, so the future of, uh, of autonomous public transport. Uh, we in, uh, in Ruter think that privately owned uh, autonomous vehicles will be banned in city centers around the world. And that's a quite harsh statement, so why do you think that? And for some years ago, uh, in, in 2017, 2018, Ruter had uh, uh, performed a, a theoretical study, a simulation together with COVID, um, on how autonomous cars may chance, uh, change transport in cities. And for, just to stop there, uh, for those who haven't read the Oslo study, please Google Oslo study and read the, the recap or, or, or of that, the summary. It's enormously interesting. So um, that simulation uh, uh, simulated how, uh, how uh, the customer will experience a um, um, transport system based on, on uh, autonomous vehicles. And in uh, all scenarios, we, we could see that 80% uh, of, of um, uh, on, on the raid hailing uh, system uh, uh, services was uh, performed within five minutes uh, from from ordering uh, a vehicle, meaning that basically eighty percent of the time you will have the vehicles uh, in front of your uh, home uh, within less than five minutes. That that's extremely short time. And in terms of uh, of, of ride sharing, a detour time it could be um, less than five minutes. Uh, for 60 percent of, of of the tours or the rides so so we are looking at a system that was simulated uh, which was extremely customer centric and in this uh, simulation uh, you can the, the result also show that numbers of, of vehicles owned in the Oslo region could be reduced by 84 to 93 percent in all scenarios and that is also basically limiting uh, or reducing the share and the vehicles in 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 Oslo significantly. Um, currently, there's around uh, three four hundred thousand privately owned uh, uh, vehicles today. And even uh, better, if we look at the best case, if we introduce publicly owned uh, small uh, vehicles for ride sharing as a public transport, you can reduce traffic by 14 to 31%. But on the other hand, if you introduce uh, autonomous vehicles privately owned or in, in uh, publicly owned in the Uber and Lyft case, you can basically double the uh, traffic volumes on the Norwegian roads or at least the, the uh, Oslo area roads. And that will uh, result in a complete traffic breakdown. And, and that worst case scenario is what we see in the Uber and Lyft case around the world, uh, increasing uh, congestions and, and, and uh, reducing the use of public transport. So that's why we ultimately think that uh, autonomous vehicle will be banned around the world, city centers around the world. It's not sustainable. So, uh, of course, Rute still believe that autonomous vehicles will play an important role of the future of mobility, but then as a public transport. Uh, so, uh, I, we have to have some, uh, some commercial uh, uh, part of this as well. Uh, we, that's why we are trying in Rute to demonstrate the, the Oslo study um, as a part of our pilots. 
So in C, uh, we started operation there with, uh, with, uh, with Passenger uh, last week. We are going to move towards stable seamless operation in 50 zone. Uh, we will trial uh, stability in Scandinavian weather. And of course, um, start to test uh, on demand functionality, uh, ACA ride hailing functionality in, in, in an area uh, around ski. And ultimately, um, developing systems for unbanned uh, operations. So that was a very, very short um, uh, brief on how we think or the future of autonomous mobility will, will be uh, around the world. Uh, banned in city centers, privately owned, but extremely important for the future of public transport. Mm. So welcome to uh, to see everyone, and uh, I think I will hand the, the word to the next uh, speaker talker. Yeah, great, Arjuna. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the study has been uh, a link to the social study has been provided by Vibek in the chat, so you can see that. Okay, then we have uh, Olav, I think, from Applied Autonomy. Thank you. So if you give me the opportunity to share screen. I'll do that. Thank you for inviting me and thank you for having me. Um, yes, I'm now able to share screen. Thank you. So I will, uh, I'm uh, um, a good follow up from uh, and, I, and I will talk about unmanned vehicles in operations, how uh, we uh, approach this in the test site Kongsberg together with our partners there, who is uh, Brocka and uh, we and we can municipality, we can county and uh, Kongsberg municipality in, and uh, also easy mile. So let me see if I can get the next picture. So very much about this is, is build trust and uh, transport system for the future. And build trust is uh, among the whole ecosystem, um, the cities, the public uh, transport agencies uh, like Brackard, V and others uh, national and internationally and also of course among the different type of use groups uh, children elderly all, all people and uh, here you can see um, some of the the pictures uh, from from Kongsberg and uh, also an even uh, we sit uh, can see we have here from from Bergen up to, to the left which is so uh, here in the right the corner you have uh, the uh, autonomous shuttle from Kongsberg that is uh, driving as a public service, you can see the shuttle in the middle here. They are driving uh, uh, Route 450, it's called. It's a regular public transport uh, that has been in operation since uh, 2018, I think, uh, October. And uh, it's still in operation and it will continue. continue. Um, and uh, um, before uh, COVID, we saw that the, the uh, uses of this transport service that replaced two bigger diesel buses is used uh, very well. It, it even increased the usage uh, compared to the, the uh, diesel buses. And it's a tr the, the trajectory that it's servicing is uh, a, a, a combination of, of city bus and, and uh, commuting bus. And it's uh, the trajectory is 4.4 uh, kilometer long. It's uh, through complex city uh, environment and uh, has been also, of course, operating during the winter time. And even uh, in now have extended also the time schedules. And it's integrated to the public transport, so it's ticket there. It's uh, it's on the the broker app. So you can see it in, in real time as, as a useful bus, I would say. Uh, and so it has been very popular among the children as well. So what is this is about? Uh, it's better, better cities, new services to lower cost. Uh, to, uh, to service uh, uh, passenger transport in many areas in cities, but also in the rural areas is very costly and uh, uh, are dependent on subsidies. So to extend this, uh, cities and, uh, must think differently. They'd like to have uh, automated buses as an enabler for, for flexible, affordable mobility services without an operator, because the operators uh, in, in uh, many services 
is, is a high cost that uh, that could be uh, easier than to extend the service if, if the cost could be lower and to uh, to be less dependent on individual cars and to use uh, and to offer innovative flexible and affordable last mile connections that is what many of the cities that we talk to like to to enable uh, and to lower cost but there are some challenges legal framework is a challenge technology maturity and of the not the vehicle alone but also the way uh, the value chains that uh, these vehicles are dependent on to do smart tasks uh, find best practices uh, document best practices uh, scale best practices and corporations and you can solve it all alone corporations is, is uh, uh, a need here um, so what do we do? We uh, are supporting um, these actors in the value chain, the, the city, the PTA and the PTO. So since there are many actors in the, in the value chain, they are looking for a partner that can, can uh, integrate and help them. You have going about, from... uh, excuse me, Ulla, uh, you have about a minute left of your time. Yeah. Okay, so then I step to the next picture. So how do we go from uh, uh, without a safety operator to without safety operator? We have three. Uh, we have four phases. We start phase one in the last in January uh, last year. Then we operated in a very segregated over area with without a driver. Then we had uh, this area factory without with the remote control. Then we, this year we will do a coastal city safety drive without close. Uh, Drive it close to the vehicle. We will do it in a pedestrian area. We will do it in mixed uh, with bicycles and so on. You should be uh, then uh, reserve your 21st of May. Then you should uh, be available to see what is going on. And the next phase is also done in this year, phase four. We will do uh, driving bikes traffic in a uh, city park, uh, in, in the industrial park uh, with, uh, without the driver and have a remote control. And all this is done with uh, here and we are working together with over 30 partners uh, in Europe and Norway to uh, to have this working in, in different types of, of environments. So that was my last slide. So this is uh, what we like to invite you to, to follow, uh, also to uh, do uh, research and so on. Uh, what we are what we are doing and, and we like to share. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ola. It's very interesting. Absolutely. Um, we have Columbus now as the next and last uh, speaker. So please, Narva, if you are uh, online, yeah. Yes, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity to present Columbus and our plans for an autonomous future. My name is Nalin Lussen, and I work as a project manager for the Smarter Transport Project, reporting to Grete Skunberg. As you know, Columbus is the PTA for the county of Rukland. However, Columbus is more than a PTA. We are also an innovative mobility provider. As you see, we have already made progress in many areas and developed innovative solutions that benefit the public. This presentation will have our focus on autonomous public transport only. I will start with our experience so far and then describe future development opportunities. Our ambition is not to develop technology, but to test new technology solutions. The graphics uh, indicates expected development of new functionalities supporting autonomy, where we go from assisting the driver to automating the bus. In this development process, it is important to balance the functionalities in place uh, with the actual infrastructure and environment. Columbus work towards a sustainable future where mobility services will be seamless, autonomous, and emission-free. This is why we ran the FOOS pilot to develop insight and skills. Between 2016 and 2018, we're in the fourth pilot as part of the autobus project using an IEC mounted bus. We were in June 2018, the first in Norway to have an autonomous bus on open roads and mixed traffic. Interactions with other road users went well, but we experienced a lot of overtaking incident, incidents due to the low speed of 12 km, kilometers an hour in the beginning. 
Now we have a Navia autonomous bus on the road for two years to test if more people will prefer public transport instead of their private car. This goes, uh, this runs in, is in operation from seven o'clock in the morning to five o'clock in the evening. Interactions now is less challenging because the bus is running at 18 kilometers an hour in an area with a speed limit of 30 kilometers an hour. In the near future, we intend to test bigger autonomous buses on closed tracks with 40 to 50 kilometer speed limit. We have since 2019 worked together with major bus producers to run a pilot in a new built hospital route as marked green on the map. The pilot will connect the new hospital with a major mobility hub to Europe's longest busway, in addition to a railway between the two cities of Stavanger and Sannes. Another major opportunity is the BRT system itself, now in development marked blue. Our intention is to utilize some of the autonomy functionalities that may be provided in new buses. That was it from me. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Narve. It's interesting to see all this. Um, now we have a poll uh, with four questions that we are want to uh, to do and uh, have your opinions about the future of autonomous public transport. So, Hanne, maybe I should give the the word to you, and you can uh, guide us through this. Yeah, you will uh, see a poll on your screen pretty soon, and it's uh, four questions, and uh, feel free to answer, and we'll sum up the results uh, in a minute. So I'll start it now. Great. Can you see it on your screen? Yeah. Yeah, good. Uh, how do we answer this? Excuse me? Uh, I, I don't click on anything. I can you click. Can, you yeah, can click. You can, you yeah. can just click on the on the answer on the answer options and then finally submit. Thank you. Good. <laughs> Well, it doesn't work for me. Yeah, it looks like people are voting right now. Mm. Do you figure it out, uh, Torkel? You, you uh, underneath you put on disagree, disagree, neither nor. Uh, I see everything, but there's no click option for me. Maybe it's because I'm a co-host for the... Yeah, 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 probably, yes. Yeah, okay, but then, it's, <laughs> then I don't need to bother with the questions. <laughs> Her so, opinion is not appreciated in this poll. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want so, me to, to uh, fix it so you can, you can join? No, 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 no. I'm interested in the other people's so okay. opinion. <laughs> So we are about 60% in, so we'll give you another minute. Yeah. And you don't have to uh, join the poll. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't want to, I'll see when it starts to slow down in the answering. This is actually quite interesting, I, mean, mm. I think. Looks like someone is still uh, working this uh, poll, so uh, take half a minute more, uh, Torkil. We will do that, yes. Mm. Absolutely. Okay, I guess we're there. It's a 79% uh, uh, join the poll. Uh, I'll finish it now and uh, we'll look at the results and uh, Torkil, you might want to uh, to uh, I'll share the results now and you will uh, take us through. Yeah. yeah. Can you see them now? Yes, I can see them. It's, um, 
Well, my first impression is that it's a, it's a good distribution here, so that's nice. Now, the first question was, the defensive driving style of autonomous self-driving buses will not make them a viable public transport alternative in cities. And uh, people tend to, I'm quite divided in their opinions, actually, but there is a majority disagreeing to that. Mm. Uh, I disagree is, is the one that has the most responses, mm. but still, there are quite a lot uh, agreeing also on this. Mm. The second one is automated, uh, no, uh, sorry, autonomous self-driving public bus transport will need separate routes, streets to be able to operate efficiently in city traffic. And here you can see it's very much divided, it's, um, uh, but Disagreeing and agreeing are, are equal, but there are quite a number strongly disagreeing. So also this one is in favor of uh, autonomous public transport in uh, city streets without separation. Uh, the third question, autonomous self-driving public bus transport will dominate city bus transport in Europe within the next 20 years. Um, again, people are quite divided in their opinions. And, um, but there is a tendency towards agreeing more than not agreeing. Uh, so we will come back to this in the next 20 years and see <laughs> whether this is actually the truth. But that's quite uh, interesting and people tend to agree that uh, this will be a dominating uh, city transport form in Europe within the next 20 years. Um, and then the last one was pu public transport in the form of mobility as a service, that is on demand services with autonomous vehicles will become in European city transport within the next 20 years. And here is a very clear a tendency that people agree to this. So people are in favor and people are optimistic on behalf of the autonomous uh, bus transport and very much optimistic about uh, mobility as a service option to with autonomous vehicles so so i think that's quite good news for uh, the operators and the public transport companies so so i think that's uh, that's my comments on that. Uh, anybody else have any questions or comments to this? Yeah, the first question, like the time frame. Yeah, I know, but still, it's uh, difficult to. We could, we could, we could, of course, specify them more. But uh, this was just uh, kind of a temperature measurement, and not, not very scientific, I think. Uh, anybody else comments? Any of the partners who want to comment on this? I think it was quite interesting with introducing autonomous driving on BRT lines because it's still kind of semi-protected environment where they have lots of priorities. So it's easier to allow, like easier environment to handle for, for, for the bus. At the same time, we can allow higher speeds and also like it's becoming a more meaningful service. So mm. far, it's just like a ride for fun, but you would you won't take it as, as a regular commuting uh, mean. But as a BRT, I think it may come quite quickly. And also, like all the economical incentives, like people would be willing to pay for that to use them. Okay, uh, Lushki, now you had a comment as well. I, I understand. Yes, uh, only that uh, we, we from Ruter at least we are really happy to uh, to work with uh, Toy and all the associated uh, members of of, uh, of Autobus and uh, well performed uh, both uh, this seminar and, and the work you have done. Uh, yeah, G great. Uh, thank you, and uh, we are impressed uh, from Ruter. Thank you. Uh, Ola has a, an interesting uh, question here for us. Um, could we know the mix of participation and uh, participating partners at the seminar? It would help us to understand the answers. Uh, is, do we have any possibility to, to know who's attending, uh, Hanna? Yes, if you look at the participants, 
Um, down below on your uh, on the line below, you can look into the names. But the, the problem is for few a few people don't have their full names. But you can go through the participant list and you can look at the names. Yeah, but that vanishes, doesn't it, when we end the seminar? Yes. Mm. So there's no no way to keep that, is it? Mm -hmm. Can, can we have a quick poll question, like uh, for, for a few sectors, like research, government, transport use, organizations? Uh, <laughs> yeah, there is a button for reactions, so like we can raise our hands who are researchers, for example. Uh, Hold on a second. Um, only can, you can, maybe you can make this poll in a very quick way. Uh, <laughs> This is challenging, I know. Yeah, I have to go out and into the Zoom uh, online to do that, so it will probably take a few minutes. But if you want, to, I can do it. What do you want to to the uh, the questions to the question to be? Uh, what you could do here, uh, Hanna, is that uh, I think this is a very good seminar. So if you do a survey after the seminar about yeah. the quality and so on, mm -hmm. and if you can include there what type of organization we are coming from. That would be a very great help. Yeah, but, yeah, but need all the all the email addresses for people attending the seminar. Okay, okay. So mm -hmm. then, okay. So it's just uh, what as uh, we so it's it are we researchers? If you give are me a couple of seconds, I'll I'll try. Actually, I can write I can write it on the chat, so uh, that could be easier for you. Mm. Maybe in the meantime, I would like to react to Alexei's uh, interpretation of the results about uh, the more structured environments. And actually, I very much agree with that, that we can see uh, that we can probably within the next few years see quite a number of interesting uh, field, uh, yeah, field, field transit lines, so to say, in, uh, in a bit more controlled uh, environments. I, I think that will be the next step in this type of projects and also this will probably be the first step to go to to go fully stewardless i think well i mean the very limited number of stewardless autonomous transport systems they are basically like that they they basically run between two guardrails uh, without anyone on track but uh, mm. they could probably go one step further to to let's say a quite controlled and safe environment instead of really like closed border line so talk you yes yeah i i, I i'm uh, optimistic to um, or happy to see that 70 percent of the uh, replies were optimistic about an um, uh, autonomous future mm. uh, there is no doubt that uh, AVs will be a very cost efficient um, uh, in the future uh, and improve the coverage of public tra transport. So um, uh, in the meantime, we have to, to develop this step by step and probably close tracks uh, will be the easiest way to go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Narva. Uh, it's uh, definitely interesting that people are so optimistic, and that's uh, I understand very well that this is good news for you. Uh, I don't know how do we. Uh, uh, I think Han is very concentrated. <laughs> if you give me one more minute, I'll, I'll actually uh, think this will work. So if you just oh, that's great. Yeah. Minutes, yeah. But uh, these alternatives that Ulla has presented, researchers, cities, PTAs, that public transport agencies, I think, and then PTOs, what is that, Ulla? That is, that is like uh, VT, uh, uh, those are the ones that operate on behalf of the PTAs. So they have uh, the responsibility for the service, so they're operators. So they are running the services, Yeah. Like the buses and the trams and stuff, yeah? Technology providers and vehicle providers. Yes, that's good, I think. Uh, it should be uh, sufficient. Okay, so now the moment of truth. Um, let me see here. I'm very impressed on that. Yeah, this is great. Oh, this is really, way to really see. interactive. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 I think there's a lot. Yeah, here we go. Um, okay. You should have, a, it does very good. Great. 100% research is not okay. Hmm. 
the only point we missed on it would be uh, if there are any uh, regulators like uh, stop the service and yeah that's true yeah yeah, yeah. i missed I, I i've thought about that now so if there are any of those days could raise their arm and you can yeah if you yeah if you're a regulator please just uh uh say yes in the chat for example and i'll uh, sum it up yeah that's that's good but lots of researchers here, I can see. Yeah, there are fewer. Yeah, that's correct. Aslak is saying there are now fewer participants. So yeah, that's true. The meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's normal. I think we were uh, up to eighty-two or something at the top. Yeah. Yeah, that was the mm, number throughout the presentations. Yeah, but since it's a short time since the, we answered the, the question, uh, the survey, I think we have most of them with us. Most okay, I think it looks like everyone has um, answered, and I'll let you know. Um, share results. Here we go. Yes, Danish Red Director. Yes, someone left the meeting. Yeah. And there's um, the Trig Traffic Norwegian Safety Council joining us and the, the Danish Road yeah. Directorate also. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. This was very interesting. Yeah, but that's great. That, that went very well. I was quite uh, curious about how this would <laughs> go, actually. So, so thank you, Hanna. That was uh, extremely nice and uh, very impressed by this, uh, this last one that you just uh, did online. That was good. Good collaborations. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but now we are approaching the end, I think. Um, a few concluding remarks. Um, uh, this means that the uh, researchers are optimistic, Dokke. Yeah, that's true. And uh, another thing that I was thinking about and have been thinking about is that what kind of researchers are represented here and uh, I think one of the reasons why the, the cyclists at Kongsberg were so extremely nice towards the autonomous bus I think is that the cyclists cycling this route in Kongsberg are either working at the technology park or are students within this field so they are quite uh, positive towards this uh, this bus, that's a hypothesis. But um, um, maybe I could share my screen and have just one minute to conclude. Uh, is that possible, Hannah? Yep. Uh, I don't have any possibility. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Um, can you see this? Yep. Very few concluding remarks, but here comes some. Uh, let me see this. Well, just to sum up, what we found was that people are positive and uh, the shuttles are perceived as safe but slow. And what we also see is that they're not that reliable as we might expect in the uh, reliable in the safety sense. So people don't always uh, rely that they will stop. And we also saw that the videos also showed us that they were not as defensive or careful as expected. So that might also be an explanation why we didn't find really the, the, the mechanisms based on this game theoretic model. Uh, we, we do find that uh, the shuttles are not bullied or taking advantage of by other road users. They, they are kind towards these buses, but the overtakings are the big problem and create obstructions, abrupt stops and risky situations. And uh, the, we didn't find any temporal effects on that, but the, the cyclists in Nostra at least say that they have become more assertive towards the short road time. Um, Public transport agencies and companies are scaling up autonomous public transport with more normal driving behavior and mobility as a service ambitions. And uh, I think 
the more normal uh, the driving behavior becomes, the better it will work actually in traffic. So, and I haven't put the last point in, but uh, the participants as, at this uh, seminar are quite optimistic about the future of autonomous vehicles. So I think that is, uh, that's it for, for now. And okay, I'm happy. Yeah, thank you all I'd for like presenting and participating. And I'd like to invite you to uh, do the research on what we are doing then on taking the operator out, how, how that work yeah. with the, with the uh, trust and uh, so on. So please, I will invite you to come, or we will invite you to come. And yeah, yeah, oh, no, that's, that's good. We will keep in touch. Okay. Thank you all and um, bye for now. Bye-bye. Thank you.